right, Tara. So thank you so much for coming coming tonight. So we were able to get you a little bit longer than you planned on being in Vegas, and I'm really thankful for that because yesterday I went to the window and I saw you speak, and you broke everyone's heart, and then you inspired everybody, and it was just really important that we got you in here, even though we have a short amount of time to explain. So I, I encourage everybody to follow, um, uh, follow her and, and, and learn more, but in a, in a nutshell, you... Had, a, had some hiccups in your life up until the age of 27, but you got through them. And for the most part, you did everything that everyone else does. You made it through college, and you found a great husband, and you got through a whole bunch of things. But at 27, something different happened to you, and you had to go into a, a surgery where they were going to take out a part of your brain. So I just want to start there, and even though there's amazing stories that led up to that, and I could... I want to share this, but we don't have time. So tell me, tell me what, what's different about your brain, and tell me about the um, surgery. I have both acquired and traumatic brain injury on my brain. So I have right anterior lobectomy. So if you take the line and you cut all the way back, that section of my brain is all gone. So I've lost the memory section on the right side of my hippocampus, my amygdala. And then your brain is kind of like your fist, and it drops down. Okay. That back part is your occipital lobe. So the front of my occipital lobe. Right, so back here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right about there, go all the way through. I have three sections that were killed, and that was due to a stroke. So I've lost my fusiform gyrus. That's a section smaller than my pinky nail, and that allows for facial recognition. Right next door controls part of my eyesight, so I've lost half my eyesight. And then the next space over is my visual memory, so I no longer have any visual memory. Okay, so could you kind of describe all three of those in the best terms you can to help us understand what it means like not have a visual memory? And the other two. When I close my eyes, I will never again see a picture. So I can only see darkness in my mind. So when I dream, I only dream in sounds. I can only hear things. When you guys think of the word soccer, you can see a soccer ball or a soccer player or something, and I see black. I can think, okay, develop a circle, get the circle, but if I wait too long to complete the entire circle, it's already gone. Just like all short-term memory, basically, like trying to create the soccer ball. Yeah, it's not even a full short-term memory because it can't be fully imaged. So it's only black now in my mind. So when I dream, I dream just as fully as everyone else. Like, it's like a crazy audio jungle in there. Like my favorite dream ever was I was paralyzed. And the doctor said, there's a good chance you'll never learn how to walk again. And I wanted to so bad and I tried so hard and it was really not going well. And one night I was dreaming and I remember feeling like wheat or tall grass blowing on my legs. And I remember feeling the wind go by me. And I remember my body moving fast, and my kids were in the background, and they were dancing and singing and shouting, Yay, Mom, faster! And I was running, and I was free in my dream. So I have the same happiness and joy and right. hope and glory in my dreams, but then I can also have the same pain and agony. My worst dream I ever remember was a car accident. You know, I couldn't see the car accident, but I could hear the brakes screeching, and I could hear the metal clashing together, and I could hear screams, and then I could hear the ambulance coming, and my kids crying and asking, Mommy, why are they taking us? And I woke up and I had to go to their rooms to make sure they were okay. My dreams are still alive. I just don't see the pictures. Uh, that's incredible. Okay, so tell me about when you woke up from um, the surgery. Like, what, how different was the world? Well, I went into the surgery, and like I said, they took away part of the memory section of my brain. So we thought I might not remember anything. There was a good chance I would have a complete memory loss or fragmented by the time I woke up. So when I woke up, I was 27. I opened up my eyes, and the world was too bright. I had to close them. I was blind. I couldn't hear. Sounds were too loud. I had hypersensitivity due to my surgery. I was deaf. I couldn't talk because my jaw had been cut through. I was mute and I was paralyzed. I was 27 years old and I woke up with a stroke and having no abilities left. And I got sad and I got scared, but it only lasted a minute because I started thinking about it. I'm 27, I'm blind. 
I'm done. I can't walk, but I'm 27 and I'm in a hospital and I just had surgery. So when I knew that, I knew that I still had two daughters waiting for me. Right. I still knew that I had a husband. I still knew that I had something to go towards. And I was so scared because before this surgery, I had had amnesia. I had a chunk of memory loss. So that was why it was so real. I might never remember anything again. And now, yeah, my world was shattered. It was so you, cracked, but I had it. So even though you couldn't see and sounds weren't really, they were too loud, you, so you had, um, but the fact that you had family that you could work towards and that it could get better. So is that that spark of hope, I guess, is what you're saying that was? My spark of hope came because I could laugh. Right. Because at least it was a memory loss. At least there was some kind of... You know, you don't need to see. It's a gift to be able to see, but you don't need to. You don't need to walk. It helps a lot if you can. You don't need to hear. But the one thing I could never get back was my memory loss, and now I had it. Right. So I just went through rehabilitation okay, therapy. so you were just happy for the piece you got. Yeah. And I um, worked hard to get the rest. So some, obviously, you're doing better. Many things came back on board, but not all things. Walk me through what happened as they got better and what you discovered? I went through 18 minutes of physical therapy. I learned to walk the same week my daughter did. It was a long process. It was a great process. It was horrible, ugly, and sloppy, and they picked her up by the arm. You mean you were learning to walk? I, learned, I had to oh. learn to walk again after my stroke, and I was right. learning okay. the exact same week that she was learning how to take her first steps because she was one. Okay. And eventually I got better. I went back to work, and I started with just filing job. And as I'm filing papers for the same lady every month, I went out one night shopping, and a lady said, hi, Tara, how are you? And I kind of looked at her and no clue who she was. Right. I was like, hey. Some stranger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then later, you know, she said, Tara, I'm surprised you're out by yourself tonight. Where's your family? OK, so she knew that I had had some problems. She knew way too much about me. And I had never seen her before. So I was like, stranger, danger. And I tried to walk away really quick. Right, but right. when I was going away from her, she laughed and she said, Tara, don't you recognize me? And it was my boss I had been working for. It was the same lady I had seen for months every single day. And I realized I knew her by pattern. So I went in for some research testing. I'm part of an Iowa Neurological Patient Registry where we map out brains. And they said, Tara, you have something called acquired antigrade prosopagnosia. Okay. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right. that's what I said to the doctor too at the same time. I'm like, whoa! <laughs> but prosopagnosia comes from a Greek word. It means without the knowledge of faces. Okay. So you have acquired or developmental. I acquired mine due to the brain injury, the stroke. Other people have developmental, so they're born with it. And most of these people don't realize they have it until they're actually tested. It's like colorblindness. You realize like something is sure. different. Yeah. You know, how did people see a blue bird in a green tree? How did he recognize he was on the same movie last week? But antigrade was where mine got confusing. Because antigrade means that from the moment of my stroke before, I'll never forget that human's face. From the stroke on, I'll never again remember a face. So when I went home, that's how I recognized so many people. Because I had known them before my stroke. I'm from a small town. I knew my teacher that lived across the street who went to the church with me and slowly I started to lose people though I remember the most painful loss that I have and I don't mean my mom passed away she's still alive but one day I was working and this lady comes in and she goes over I had some flyers and she said hi and I said can I help you find something and she ignored me and I asked her another question she ignored me again and then I finally went out there because I figured, you know, she's older and she couldn't hear and I said something and she turned and she smiled and she looked at me and she said, Tara, what are you doing today? It was my mom. It was my mom and I had never Sorry. before. Sorry. <laughs> I am. Like, that's tough. I had never before seen my mother. And I realized I would never again know who my mother was. So when I looked out to see, there's my mom looking at me. I would never know. And slowly I've lost every single person. But I didn't, I knew it was severe, but I guess I didn't realize how truly severe it was until about four years after I'd gotten my hair shaved off for surgery, I went and I got my hair cut and colored, and I look good. 
Okay. I mean, yeah, you know how you oh, had those yeah. days where you look good. Looks good, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I look really good. Though. Okay. But I went um, gave the lady a huge tip, and I walked out into the mall, and a man nodded and smiled at me, and then a lady did, and we said hi to each other, and we walked down to the mall step by step, and at the end of the mall, she pushed against me. So I wasn't aggressive, but I reached out, and I was like, back off. Yeah, don't touch me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm walking here. <laughs> All right. And my hand hit the mirror. That lady that had said hi to me and followed me all the way down was me. But with the haircut, the change of that simple feature, I no longer knew who I was. So now I call myself she or her. It's no longer a first person association I'll ever have with myself again. Okay, so we are running out of time, but we, I, we're past time, but I wanna make sure we end this with like a silver lining and um, are you going to be here afterwards? I thought the audience Absolutely. members want to come talk with you because I know we've got you've got yeah great message to send. So um, give me one, I'm just going to extend it just a little bit, but just give me one more good silver lining story. Like tell me about how you've got this energy to get out there and share the story and and definitely talk about your book and a website and any way people can learn more. I still have a lot gone, but I'm glad for what I have gone because when I run into walls, I realize I can't see, but I'm lucky enough to see. I still fall down, but I realize I'm lucky enough to walk. We all have troubles. We all struggle with some things. It's going to be hard. It's going to be painful. But everyone, everyone has it within themselves to lift themselves up. I put a whole bunch of my little anecdotes together in a book, brainstorming functional lessons from a dysfunctional brain. And I love to talk to people. And I love to answer questions because that's part of what helps me heal and helps other people learn. So thank you so much for having oh, me. Thank you for today. coming out and visiting us and staying an extra night for the podcast. So. Give her a big round of applause. Thank you so much. Okay.